Um, so I'm going to introduce our speakers who are, who are here today. So Rosie from Bow House is here and also Rachel from Tamar Valley Food Hubs is here. And we're just being joined now. I've just accepted um, her into the room. We're being joined by Kate from Kent Food Hubs, Foxton. Hello. Uh, hey, good to see you. You're not in your car today. No, no, everything's cancelled. So I'm not in the car park today. <laughs> it's like, I'm actually in my house. I'm not cold. I've got no jumper on. Yay, keeping warm. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So thanks everyone for coming. So yeah, um, as I was just saying, it's going to be a really informal chat. We're going to kind of pass around and yeah, um, really great to hear. It'd be really great to hear how your Christmas Christmases went. Um, you know, what went well, what didn't go well, what did you try this year that you haven't tried before? So just, yeah, in your own kind of words, just talk about what, what you learned this year and what you might or might not do next year from those learnings. Um, and yeah, so I'm thinking first kind of half now, if we just kind of pass around, um, and then have like 30 minutes at the end, which is a bit more of a kind of informal ask questions and perhaps even talk about your own experience as well. Um, so Rachel, is it okay if we start with you? Yeah, yeah, cool. sure. Thank you. Um, hi everyone. Um, uh, with, at, from, I'm from Tamar Valley Food Hubs down in Cornwall um, and we had a really busy Christmas. Um, we had a lot of new products this year that um, I think engaged more people. We'd also in the past 12 months um, gained a lot more customers through lockdown um, and doing more kind of marketing activities. So kind of October time, we felt like it was going to be um, a lot busier for this year. And um, we started um, planning for that really um, and chatting about Christmas in October firstly with how we're going to staff it and manage it if it was as busy as lock time time um, the products and trying to pin down producers to what their Christmas offering would be don't think you can ever start that early enough because there was a lot of toing and throwing and hoeing and humming of um, how many turkeys would be available for us and how many chickens so and even when we were kind of like halfway through November, those numbers were changing in early December. So, um, yeah, that was glad we kind of started those conversations off early. Um, but I think the main thing that we did differently this year was end of October. Um, I um, pulled together a Christmas brochure, which I'm going to try and upload onto the chat but it might not. Um, um, it was a Christmas brochure that could be downloaded or um, I'll send it around, I'll send it to Kay afterwards and perhaps you can share it with participants. Um, but yeah, doing a brochure which had um, kind of like an end of year note to all of our customers to say hi and thank you for their support over the year and then it included all of our key dates which we planned out pretty early for what our order deadlines would be working back from Christmas um, for various products um, it included recipe um, for a vegetarian Christmas main with um, amazing mushrooms that we sell um, turkey prices geese prices chicken prices bit about the producers selling them um, I think we included a crossword <laughs> which mentioned producers and reflected local area um, a mold apple juice recipe just that kind of thing so it's quite a substantial like 12 page booklet um, so we got that out to all of our food hub customers on I think the second week of November um, with the idea that um, pre-orders for Christmas meats would be able to be placed the following week. Um, and then there was also, um, along with the deadlines that were in the brochure, we then backed that up with um, Facebook posts to remind people of when those deadlines were and um, when we needed deposits and that kind of thing. Um, so. Um, that worked really well for us, I think. It's a bit of a, a bit difficult to gauge how successful it was, but um, we felt it was a good minder for everyone. And it, we did it entirely on 
Canva um, with the free version of Canva as well, which was really good. Um, so all, all of our customers in one week in November who had ordered with us got a printed copy of the brochure. And then from then on, we had it as a free item on our food hub. So if people hadn't received one or we had a new customer, they could order shopping. And it was also downloadable as a PDF as well, food hub, our own food hubs front page. So, so that worked really well for us. And it was um, especially writing the deadlines page because we had it big and blown up on our office wall so we could remember them too. Um, but yeah, that was that was really good. Um, we also um, have a weekly MailChimp newsletter to all of our customers and we kind of um, spread out the launch of different Christmas products for various weeks leading up to Christmas. So one week in the newsletter, we'd kind of like say that Christmas hampers were now ready to order or um, pre-orders for meats were ready to order. Um, operationally, that worked really well for us as well. Um, we had the week before Christmas, we asked customers to order all of their whole foods and dry goods and jarred goods. So Christmas week, we could just concentrate on the fresh and operationally that really helped as well and led into Facebook posts and newsletter posts about reminders for things. So, so that was, that was good. Um, in between Christmas and New Year, um, I broke my thumb in November so I can actually lift a vegetable over Christmas so I've been working from home for ages so it did actually give me a lot more time to be doing the, the scheduling of Facebook posts and things but that was quite a nice thing to do in between Christmas and New Year was schedule a few posts to remind people that we open on New Year's Day evening and um, kind of like first couple of posts for the new year whilst we still weren't in the office um, and that quite worked quite well we've had a really busy first week back um as busy as christmas actually and i think we got quite a lot of customers who just ordered like christmas turkey or a christmas piece of meat with us and um they've now stayed into january which is great it's january so far um but we kind of got also into the habit of every time we get a new customer we email them to check everything was okay and let them know no no quibble guarantee and that they should sign up to our newsletter and follow us on Facebook so those kind of that kind of hello email has been really good I think as well and lets us know what we're doing well and and not so that's that's good um but yeah I think it's um it's a strange time obviously and a bit of an unprecedented start to a new year so it'll be interesting to see how it pans out Awesome. Thank you so much, Rachel. It's yeah, so interesting to hear how things have been going and, and I saw the brochure and it looks amazing. So really well done on that. And uh, and yeah, and, and also great to hear that your customers uh, are staying into the new year. So I'm really happy for you for that. So awesome. Thanks for sharing. Um, I'm going to pass over now to Rosie, if, if that's okay. Hello, everyone. Um, if I've not met you before, I'm from Bow House and uh, normally what we do at Bow House is we have our big events, our market weekends and then back in March we set up um, Bow House Link which was to try and connect um, all the traders that we have on our books with the customers who then couldn't come to the official market weekends and it's kind of grown and grown and um, been a bit of a crazy last year with it being a real success. So our Christmas, we again tried to start really early. I think knowing that the, the actual physical markets take so long to kind of get up and running and get planning, we tried to plan the, the market and the online market um, quite far in advance. So again, like you said, Rachel, um, pinning down traders is really tough, sort of saying, look, don't leave us to the end of your pile. Obviously, we know you want to and um, make sure your customers are have got their stock first and things but please don't forget about us and run out of things and then oh you know we'll just give Bowhouse Link the scraps it was trying to make sure that they could whatever they said they could uh, fulfill and they did and if they couldn't then they at least brought a substitute so some of our jam traders we said look if you don't have that 
um, please bring something similar so we can substitute it and give a um, give a little bit of a refund, but at least the customer's getting something to take away with them. Um, so we opened our, we have a weekly order cycle that just runs all the time. And then we opened our Christmas order cycle, I think it was four weeks in front of that. So it ran on top of the weekly at the same time. So it was a bit, we kind of did a really clear um, social media post and like a recorded video of a screen showing the how to order. And so when the customers went on, they had to choose an order cycle to shop in before they could just start shopping. So it made them look and think, hang on, am I doing my Christmas shop or am I just doing my weekly, which I'm getting on Saturday? So that actually worked quite well. I wouldn't change too much about that. Um, we had one or two people going, oh, I've ordered in the weekly, but I want to do the Christmas. And we just had to cancel them and ask them to order again because you couldn't, you can't just switch them over into the other stock basket, if that makes sense. Um, so that worked really well. We did a, a social media, media sort of advent calendar countdown for the last five days of our um, of our order cycle, which is a bit silly because in my head I was like, oh, this is going to look great. We're going to have carrots in the shape of a five and Brussels sprouts in the shape of a one. And asking traders to do this, I was like, oh my goodness, this is such a mistake. So I ended up just like going to find traders with them. Um, because quite a lot of them are actually based at Bohaus. So going to find like the chocolate and laying out chocolates in like a four. And actually it was quite nice. It worked, worked really well and it looks quite nice on our feed, all in the different numbers counting down. Um, and what we did with the traders was we said, um, look, if, you're, if your product isn't perishable, um, then the way that our order cycles worked was when the reports were ready on the Wednesday for the weekly, um, at 1 p.m. on the Friday when they should be dropping off the Christmas shut so they actually could bring their weekly and their Christmas orders all in one go so they just did one drive um, to Bowhouse and that worked quite well so they were they were sort of cutting down on their sort of drop-offs to Bowhouse and um, but then obviously all of our fresh produce came in the day before so we were really pleased we did 100 orders in a day on the 23rd, which is really good for us. Normally we see about an average of um, 40 to 50 on our weekly. Um, so 100 was really good for us. And it was, we had our delivery area, I think we did about 30, yeah, I think we did about 40 deliveries, which was all over five. And that was really good. And we actually had new customers from, out with our cust out with our delivery zone saying, can I get a delivery? And we actually just did it because we actually want to spread our delivery zone anyway. So we said, yes, we'll do it, but can you tell your friends and your neighbors that we will now deliver to your area? Um, and that, that worked quite well. So yeah, the 23rd was a bit mental, um, but went really well. And one thing I probably would do next year is almost do a bit of a, a fake order. We had somebody order a really really great order lots of dry goods lots of um different sort of fresh meats and yogurts and things like that but then they had to cancel coming up and um, because of the new restrictions in place so we couldn't tell the traders not to bring that stock because it was too late in the game when they cancelled so we just took the hit and and paid for that produce and it arrived but actually thank goodness we had it because there was some little glitches um, from our side of things where traders maybe didn't bring the right thing but then we had an extra thing to substitute it with um, or or somebody dropped a yogurt but then we have a spare yogurt so actually just having some spares here and there um, was was really good and then when we had leftover stuff just the staff it was a bit of a Christmas present for them some chocolates and things um, and then one thing we did do um, it sort of started designing um, at the end of last year was we wanted to try and keep the boost going into the new year because we were worried it was just going to fall off into January and February and um, not knowing there was going to be a lockdown really and normally we don't have our market weekend so Bowhouse kind of goes um, into hibernation into January and February apart from the producers that are based there are all functioning so what we did was we created a um, we created a 5% discount for all of the existing customers on our book. So if they've ordered before, we added a, a thank you January, February um, discount tag, um, which Louise really kindly helped me create because I'm terrible at tags. Um, 
So we created that and all the customers that had already shopped with us within five got 5% 5 off. And then they received a letter in the post saying, thank you for shopping with us. Please send us some feedback. We wanted to send a letter. So it wasn't just another email that was lost. It was something that was kind of physical and came through the post and they could open it up. And at the same time, they got one of these, which is just kind of a little um, bow house. This is kind of our branding, just black and white, really simple little handout with the kind of calendar of the year, um, which they can put on the fridge and use for other things. It's just something really kind of plain and simple. Um, but it highlights all of our um, all of our actual physical market dates. And I will attach a file, but it says all of the different, um, each month has like a seasonal food below it, just to kind of give highlights of this area, what's seasonal and what's best to eat at that time. And um, we didn't highlight all of the Bowhouse link um, key dates because there's so many of them through the month, they would just be a bit too much. But at the bottom, we've got two QR codes, um, one for our event information, and then one for our weekly shop. And I think I've seen that a lot more people now use QR codes and quite like them rather than a link because on something like this you can't click a link obviously so a QR code has been really really useful and it's my favorite thing to create now so whenever I can I just create a QR code <laughs> here's a link and then the good thing about it is that you can update the QR code and update the website so that information is always current but if it's on something physical it doesn't go out of date um, so yeah we've had a bit of a we, we decided to, we opened our market back on the 4th, um, but a lot of our traders went, they didn't have stock ready for the 9th. Um, so what we said was we, oh, we've opened it for two weeks so our existing customers can shop for two weeks and they'll get it on the 16th. So they're going to be a bit hungry until the 16th, but a lot of the traders um, kind of just wanted to rest, which I didn't want to haggle with them and hassle them. And then they come back at it for the 16th, but it still means that we're still accruing orders uh, during this kind of hibernation time and the shop still looks open so people can browse. Um, Cause one of the things I don't like about our site is that it does shut, you can't look at it for two days. So I'd like to kind of tinker with that so that people can just see it open all the time. So even if they're not shopping, they can go on and just look at things because there's nothing worse than somebody searching something and it being shut and be like, oh, well, I'm not doing, I'm not going to come back. And um, so I think into the new year, I need to look at changing that. Um, so I'm just trying to think of things that I've written down, what we what we did. And um, um, our weekly newsletter went out as well. And that was really well received. And um, we did something that didn't work very well. And I'm, it's kind of my fault, but we, we kind of did... Um, uh, not hampers that were pre-made because then the trader stock would have been incorrect in the hamper bundle. We had plain hampers and wrapping and string and stuffing that, that they could buy from us and then they could make their own hamper. And I mean, I thought it was a great idea. I bought three for myself. <laughs> they, they didn't do crazy well. And it, maybe it was the imagery, maybe it was the that we didn't really explain it very well. And it probably because our social media calendar was packed for all of December, we struggled to really talk about it a lot. So that's maybe something that would be really nice. I like the brochure idea. That's really, I like something tangible that people can hold on to and they have. I think that's, they'll remember that when they look in, look in their cupboard or their drawer and go halfway through the year and go, oh, that, you know, that, that was a really good thing and we could do that next year. Um, so I could, that would probably work quite well if it was on a brochure or something a little bit more keepable. Um, but apart from that, it was a bit of a whirlwind. So I'm glad when you and Kay got in touch and said, let's look back on how it went, because I'm sure everyone's the same. They're always just um, moving on to the next thing. So this is really useful. So thank you for asking me to chat, but I'll be quiet because I tend to yabber on. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you so much for that. It's so interesting to hear about everything that you're doing. And also, um, yeah, interesting, the hamper idea. Um, it seems like it'd be a really great idea. So it's interesting to know why that didn't work. So maybe something to, yeah, really cool. So I, I would think that like for me as a, as a customer, I'd find that a really interesting, cool thing to do. I mean, yeah, I sorted out like three or four presents that way. I was like, great, I'll just order stuff with a nice link. I think all my friends were like, Rosie, we know you do this as a job. You really need to start thinking a little bit more creatively. It's like, comments have been caught up. That's for everyone. Cool. Thank you so much for sharing. And and yeah, that's definitely um, what I want to do with this session is before we're kind of on into the wide world of 2021 and thinking of the next thing, like it's good now. To, well, it's fresh in our minds to think about what's happening. 
So thanks for that. And um, cool. So next, um, Kate, if you'd like to share with us, that would be amazing. Thank you. Hi, everybody. <laughs> um, I'm going to start with uh, things that went wrong um, for Christmas, not to be negative, but I'm from Kent Food Hubs, folks, and, and we're in Kent. So um, I think you can begin to imagine some of the things that might be wrong as we hurtled headfirst into tier four, right on the um, everything. So we actually ended up not setting up a Christmas cycle. We were going to set up a, a meat cycle um, and a cake cycle. So basically anything that needed that bit of extra work or that bit of extra prep or needed to be fresh, that was gonna, we were gonna allow people to order that separately to go in with the order for the day. Um, and then we went into tier four and um, and then then the French closed the borders and we turned into a, a, like literally we were cut off from the world by about a million lorries. These poor, poor guys who had no food, no toilets, no blankets, no nothing. who were stuck there for days, but nobody could could get anywhere. And it was just literally um, all hands on deck. So we took a very different tack to the one that we were um, intending on. We just promoted what we had. Um, we went all out to support our traders because some of them, I mean, our, our poor our poor pork butcher, he um, went down with COVID just before Christmas and had to pull himself completely off the hub. So there was no sausages, no bacon. It was, um, you know, it, it was really, it was really tricky, but we, so, social media wise, we went, I, I just took it down a different road and we did um, 12 days of Christmas. So we did a competition for a New Year's shop, a £30 New Year's shop. Send in your Christmas pictures, we will post them, we will do this, and then you'll just randomly get entered into a draw on Christmas Eve and you will win £30 of shopping in the new year. So although I was still posting, buy your sprouts or the cycle closing it was really customer interactive and we launched to pay it forward for our um local um action on homelessness we've got quite a few rust, rust sleepers um, down this way and um their services have been decimated they can't have people into the building so they've got nowhere to get dry they can only have so many volunteers in and we actually raised 308 pounds which was just amazing so we just went down the road of we are all in this together. We will, Christmas is not gonna be the same shape as you thought it was. You can't shop where you want to. Things can't get to us. People didn't get their Christmas presents because they were still stuck at the border. I mean, it was, it was a little bit insane here. We were a little bit cut off from the rest of the world. And so we just went down the road of we're, we're here, we're with you, we're part of the community. And we just went all out Christmas and it prompted a really lovely um, response um we had loads of, of emails and, and direct messages as well as the conversations that were happening on facebook i went on to every group you can possibly think of from the local ladies group to the wi to the local residents groups just joined into every conversation that anyone had about christmas and oh have you heard of kent food hubs we're amazing we're doing this and it's not coming from outside of kent they're coming from a field over here and and that worked quite well and we we knew that we have about 100 customers that are what I would call regulars. So although our, our orders run at about 70 to 80 a week, there's not the same, there's probably about 50 people that will order say like every single week. And then there's the extras that will order once a fortnight or once a month. And then those people that would just order sporadically, like they'll, they'll um, stock up on meat or, or dried goods every now and then. So we, we were hoping that they come together for Christmas, but we, instead of sort of our 70 or 80 orders, we, we got 120. So it all came together really nicely. I think everyone that ever sort of shot with us. Um, oh, sorry, my dog's just, hello. <laughs> um, didn't knock the iPad off, so there. Um, everyone that had ever shot with us kind of came back and we saw customers that we, we hadn't seen since the first lockdown. Um, and it was really lovely. We got Christmas cards and all sorts of things. So it, it was a very, very different, Christmas cycle and Christmas you know everybody had had the same the same thing um, and then we took a week off over Christmas um, like we closed the order cycle over Christmas and, and came back we've just had our our first one back um, yesterday and of course we're we're in if we're in lockdown so we've still had traders coming on and and off but we've noticed the numbers have, have really stayed up so we're we're just basically staying with that. We've still got our pay it forward on. Um, and we are going to look at began veganuary, but it's going to be like looking at, you know, dried goods, um, cooking with children, staying at home. So every everything that we had planned um, has just basically 
take, I know we're all in lockdown now, but but yeah, kind of being the, the COVID epicenter of the country <laughs> kind of was not what we were expecting. Um, but actually it, it turned out it, it went really, really well. The only thing exactly as you guys said actually was was kind of um, rallying the traders and making sure that they could do what they said they were going to do. So we, we managed to introduce an organic veg box last minute, um, which was really, really good, really good value as well. Um, the butchers put on a few extra variants, which is fantastic because we were down, we were down pork. We had, we had no pork products. Our poor, poor Dave was, was off. Um, and then our, um, our Italian producers, they were off with COVID and came back just literally just in time for Christmas. So it was very, we couldn't, Kind of put too much stuff forward because we didn't know who was going to drop next or if if they were going to drop including us it was really scary we didn't go anywhere or see anyone <laughs> we were like you know we can't do that so actually in retrospect it, it worked really really well in fact the only really big um snafu on the day was the um the whole big sprout stalks they were about two two and a half foot long and so they put them in the veg boxes. They wouldn't fit in the veg boxes and stack. So they bought separate crates and said, can you pop? So we had, I don't know how many extra crates, no room for them. And then we had to remember to give everybody <laughs> that had ordered this particular box, like a like a, a sprout tree. So we ended up chasing some people down the road with our masks on saying, you've forgotten your sprouts. But yeah, it was really, yeah. <laughs> so it was, that was, we'll know that for next year, but it's, we're, we're actually one as a hub. It's our first anniversary on the 20th six of this month so that was our our first Christmas Woo! and um yeah we've really really hit the ground running because we'd only just started and um and we went from about 30 orders to 120 to 175 in in, in about three weeks when Covid hit so we've kind of we've, we've done okay to to maintain it so I think next year we're going to start planning Christmas in about June um, and we're going to have like every contingency plan that you could possibly imagine, including spare staff, because that really was, you know, edge of edge of the seat stuff. If any one of us had to go into isolation, we would not have been able to to do it. And because we're in a bubble, um, we, we have no one that could could have taken our places. So we had a, a list of phone numbers and we, we had to ring everybody and say your orders are going to be slightly late you know delivery but everybody was amazing they were fantastic and I think it was just the fact that we were all in this really weird state going into Christmas and not being able to see anyone not being able to do anything we just had the announcement and so people were more grateful for their sprouts than ever they just wanted familiarity so yeah it was um it was I'd love to be able to say we did this and it worked and that was amazing but basically we just yeah we just pulled it back and just built on customer connection and um, I think we've carried that through into the, the new year really well um, and then touch wood we won't be like this for too long <laughs> but our orders are, are creeping up again yeah um, now we just need to, to new premises because we're too big for where we are and um, Hopefully it'll uh, it'll settle and we can we can get a bit of stability. So that that was that was our Christmas. But all of the planning, actually, having said that, that we'd done, um, it really did, including the social media, all of the social media stuff. When it, all, it did start to kind of like go wrong bit by bit, and you know people were off, and when we finally got you know the, the order day tied down, and then they said, oh, well, the motorway shut, and it was like what well, the motorway that everyone needs to, to to come to to get to us. <laughs> Amazing. Um, we were really calm. We were really okay. It was just you know what the customers are going to be okay if some of them can't get something till tomorrow. They were all fine. They were all great because we just literally just all of us were getting um, DMs to our business pages. Um, I, I, I'm not a trader, so I was just handling all the social media, but Claire and Mel, my co-coordinators, they were getting things direct to them. The email was was flooding in and we just focused on keeping all of the communication open and just, you know, even on, on the last day we had, I don't even know how many phone calls saying, I'm really sorry, we've had to go into isolation, can we deliver? So we did and we didn't charge anybody for it. We just, we just delivered. Um, because you know it, it could have been anybody and it was Christmas and I went home and had a, a stiff gin so yeah it was it was <laughs> it was um yeah it was a steep learning curve but it was it was a good one I feel really confident about doing anything now from now on in we're we're there <laughs> short of a plague of locusts we should be fine I think but yeah that so that that was us really 
Awesome. Thank you so much for, for sharing. It sounds like, a, yeah, one you probably won't forget <laughs> for a long time. But, no. Yeah, it's amazing that you, yeah, managed to keep everything going. And it sounds like, you're, yeah, I, I always think whenever you share your stories with community, you're very lucky to, yeah, to, to have you. So, it, it really uh, did show like a like-minded bunch of people like it it, it it kind of brought together everything that that I think any food hub or anybody like what we're trying to do everybody had the same goal and everybody just pulled together customers hubs and it, it was and the, and the traders were amazing so yeah yeah it was good awesome I'm so glad to hear and also and also just want to kind of point out from a marketing perspective um how what a good idea it is to yeah to be speaking in groups and doing kind of that kind of proactive outreach is is a, is a really really good good facebook tip there so thanks for that <laughs> cool so yeah thanks everyone for sharing it's been so interesting to hear like very different experiences but also yeah just yeah and so good to hear that everyone's had such a intense but also good christmas so yeah, so I guess now um, we've got plenty of time for questions and further sharing. And I was kind of thinking for the second half, it being quite kind of informal. So if anyone else um, wants to share how Christmas was for them or their hubs, that would be amazing. Um, and if there's any questions, that'd be great too. Um, so I'm going to pass over to Louise to kind of facilitate the questions. It's okay. Yeah, I found that was just incredibly inspiring from all three of you, really. I is it really can't imagine but yeah, I think even Kate, you started off saying it was didn't go to plan, but to me, it sounded like the best thing. And um, yeah, I think the fact that you weren't able to um, deliver everything that everyone wanted would probably stand you in better stead because customers can then trust that you are following COVID procedure because they can see uh, proactively that you've acted where you had to, which I think is the best thing really um so yeah questions questions ask each other <laughs> um, does anyone have anything to start or um uh, sandra susie or sally would you like to talk about how your hub went uh, your christmas went with your ofn enterprise i will if you want me to want me yeah to that'd be interesting susie you have okay. to see me now you can see me now yeah, there we go. Don't look at the state of me. Um, uh, yeah, it was interesting. <laughs> um, uh, for those of you that don't know, I, uh, I run a country market uh, in Cockermouth. And after lockdown one, we decided to go with our fan online. And um, we were just starting it when we went into lockdown two. Um, it was just a... Um, and... It was a, a steep learning curve, and I mean steep learning curve. My hub's going. Hang on a minute. Oh, um, so we, um, because we know a lot of our customers don't do online, we also had a, a non-online ordering system, uh, and we also supply another local hub um, that's broader than our producers. So we've got three <laughs> ways of ordering uh and it it didn't work it was very very complicated for me to sort it all out I, I, I would do it the same way again i think the worst bit was trying to work out who had sold what for which hub and how did the customer pay um and I, and I, that was the worst bit so so we've just launched just launching it again tomorrow um and i'll do it a completely different way this time because it was just far too complicated for me um it, it worked because we got customers we um hadn't had in the market that bought christmas goodies um well, one day i was upset one about half an hour before um the order cycle closed one day we had 98 pounds worth of order off one lady and <laughs> it had heart failure <laughs> blimey um and we also had about three uh, was it three order cycles running at once and that was far too complicated uh, having a Christmas one as well as a normal one and and uh, unfortunately for me I wanted to make sure everybody knew what was being ordered but they didn't realize that some of them weren't for now they were for the 23rd um, if that makes sense during December 
So we ended up with somebody having to make chutney at the last minute because uh, she'd sold it because she thought it wasn't wanted and it was all very complicated. Um, anyway, um, it, it, was, it was successful because we only had um, three markets under collection before Christmas. So it enabled us to take more orders than uh, we would have done. Um, and I think people will use it more now. We're not going live again yet. As I say, tomorrow we'll, we'll go back live. Um, I think people are more aware of us now. Um, one of the posts I put on Facebook um, just before Christmas to say we're, we're sort of running and we're back again, uh, we had 12,000 views of it, um, which was unbelievable for me. I, I, uh, and, and it was not food, it was four of us shoving trolleys up the main street. And, and you just think, how, why do people like that? <laughs> and, you know, um, and we also, like the Tamar, I think it was the Tamar lady said, um, Oh, no, it was you, Katie. Um, you just, um, what's the word, got involved with conversations on every on every page you could think of. Uh, well, I just bounced our posts onto um, the local selling pages, the local WI, and again, everybody that I can think of to just to let us know, that, to let them know that we're there. Um, so, yeah, 29 Christmas cakes, um, which was a record. Uh, masses of Christmas puddings this year for some reason. I'm just talking to somebody today about started making them now. I've just done um, 14 pounds of mince meat yesterday, ready for next Christmas. <laughs> so yeah, it, it it it'll grow. It'll grow. I can't I can't say we're we're very successful with it because we've not been running long enough and it's been a been a bit of a learning curve. But yeah, it'll grow. So yeah. Oh, and Louise um, sorted me out yesterday. She's an absolute star, that girl. She needs a pay rise. <laughs> I, I wouldn't quite go that far, but yeah, I, I did suggest, um, and I think that it's been suggested here before, like to do the phone buddy system, which is like for those who can't or don't want to play online or uh, don't use the internet to, it, to sort of collate all your orders in one place so that you're not like doing um you're not having a paper system taking orders over the telephone and your OFN orders and supplying a hub, another hub just to have everything in one place is a, a good thing and that can be done on this the, the platform um but yeah I think um because I've followed your seeing as you started quite late and close to Christmas I think you'll find you will cycle business a lot easier next year but yeah. it's it's a lot to get to grips with in that last um month when you've also got other pressures on you so yeah but it's interesting to hear you've got new customers potentially that will hopefully come back this coming year yeah. so yeah um did you want to ask um rachel or um katie or um rosie anything about um i know like country markets sometimes do hampers maybe um uh, Rosie had a bit. Did you do hampers as well, Katie, uh, in Kent? I know you were talking about it at one point. Um, we we ended up so um, our um, like our, our our soap producer Mel, who's one of the coordinators as well. She did hampers. We put some little food hampers together, but we were kind of relying on the um, hub members to come together and collaborate, and it, it was just too hard to do in case people couldn't couldn't do it because it's we seem to be very infectious down here but we will be doing it for next for next year so we ended up selling lots of the items as um individual items and that that still went you know that katie i think i've lost you lost your sound katie i think we've lost your sound Oh dear, um, I'm not sure Katie can hear us either. I oh know. Katie, can you hear us? Kate, can you hear us? Yeah, I can. Yeah. We we lost we lost sound for a second. Um, oh, sorry. I think oh, maybe sorry. Find, like was... twenty seconds and. Oh no, someone was trying to ring me. So I was just ignoring them and it came up, that'll be why. And I was just saying in retrospect, it, it might not have been a bad thing that we didn't manage to do it because we would have ended up with orders and then we would have ended up with half the things missing and we ended up doing a lot of um 
I mean, my one of my other uh, our other coordinators, Claire, she had to take uh, all of all of the folks and people who who sell to um, our sister hub in Ashford. She took um, their orders, and it's it's about a sixteen or seventeen minute drive from here, and it took her three and a half hours because of the motorway. <laughs> So um, yeah, it, 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 in retrospect, it was good, but we will definitely be doing it next year. We will be because it, it's such a lovely thing to do. And I love your idea about being able to make your own. There's so many people who want to actually do it. I mean, I'm saying that actually, we did have one local business approach us, and they um, they wanted they were making up their own hampers, so they wanted four or five items to put in their own ha hampers. So we facilitated them with like a bulk order. So although we still made a look, they wanted us to do it. Um, but we managed to get like a better price for them than them buying it all individually. So we helped somebody else make a hamper, but we didn't we didn't make up our own. But it was lovely that they thought of us. They're a lovely local sustainable business um, that make all sorts of incredible things out of recycled products. Um, so they really wanted to include us in their in their hamper. So we put a little little thing in about who we are and what we do um, in there. And then they had curry paste and jam and um, and, and a local hospital as well had um, soaps loads and loads of soaps and I made um, lots of like little soap gifts up like to to give to them so we opened up for anybody who wanted to use our, our products um, as well which is really nice but we'll be doing our own our own hampers next year we did sell a lot of brown paper though that went really well I was just um wondering a bit of a question for anyone all of you kind of um one thing that was on social media and s sometimes you see it uh, for local food is like can you create a Christmas dinner from your hub um what were kind of your most popular sort of goods and do you think it was a bit different this year because like a lot I know it was last minute for some people but some people have preempted that they were only going to spend it on their own do you think that people bought um the the norm of a turkey or do you think that from the customers you had tended to buy an alternative version. Um, Rosie, um, Rachel, Kate. Yeah, so um, I would say we, because our butchery is on site um, and Sophie who runs the butchery, she had her own order cycle running at the same time. Um, she saw um, uh, smaller birds obviously a lot many m more smaller birds some people are doing two small birds because they weren't sure and then if they had then they had everyone then they would put them both on or uh, or they would just have one and put one in the freezer which was quite sensible um and i think we we didn't have many well, that's not very true i was going to say we didn't have many gifty things but we did have gifty things and they did okay but i would say a lot of our orders were big, they were heavy, much heavier than our weekly. Um, our basket value was much higher. You know, our basket value on average was probably about, each order would be about 85 quid, um, which is much higher than our weekly average. Um, and some of our boxes that went out for delivery, we had, there was, it was three boxes for one order, you know, and that's a lot to deliver. Our van only fits 15 crates. So then we had to calculate you know, how many runs we could do with a van with 15 crates and da 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 da. Um, so I would say people were doing almost their full Christmas meal shop with us, which was great because one of our main goals was, with Bowhouse Link in general, was first of all the essentials because it was set up during lockdown. So all your essentials, your flour, your, your dairy products, your meat products, your veg, um, and then the add-ons. So People were shopping for the week of Christmas. So we had lots of breakfasty stuff that was really busy. Um, and then, like I said, the essentials. So the milk, the dairy, the, the meat did really, really well. Um, and then the gifts on top of that also. But it, it was obviously different. We had different products in our weekly order cycle to our Christmas. So it's kind of hard to, to, to kind of see in between the weekly and the Christmas, if that makes sense. I'm not sure, what about everyone else? Yeah, Rachel, it'd be really interesting to hear from Tamar because you'd be you're probably the only one who'd have in comparison to what sold last year to what sold this year, as in whether people's shopping habits did change or not. Um I mean that's purely speculative from my point of view, maybe they didn't, but 
Yeah, I don't, I don't think they necessarily changed too much. And I think because at the time Cornwall was in a really low tier, people were still happy with all drink. Didn't get, I think we got like, like one cancellation of a big turkey. So we did a lot of cancellation. Baskets. Rachel, we we're, we're kind of losing you a bit. Oh, sorry, it's very good. <laughs> um, yeah, we to see a lot of increase really in vegetables and dairy and meat and fish were really big for us, really big for us. So, um, and yeah, we saw people. In, like in their own houses at home, so we we got off the kind of little local produce, um, like dried light hamburger to make big stock of them in December because we kind of think they, they did do it last year, and we sold a lot more. Rachel, you that keep... kind of thing early on in the month, and we actually did our own ready made hampers. Sorry, I don't think my internet's very good. Yeah, I'm sorry. You keep dropping out. It's a shame because I really wanted to hear what you're saying. I don't know. Um, I think we got most of it. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, I and One thing I was wondering was that um, just uh, for other hubs in the future, things like turkeys and meat products, uh, do you think being at enabling customers anyone can answer this question um do you think enabling customers to order early like before they collect really help because i'm just thinking about my mum she'll want to know that she's got her turkey weeks before she collects it so um but maybe my mum's strange but um do you think that's a benefit or not um yeah so what what we did was we um we opened it and we said, you need to get your bird order in sharpish. And actually the bird orders closed before our market shut. So I think our bird orders shut on the 13th um, and then the market kept running until the 18th. So we just had to really shout at people, obviously not shout, but just be like, please order your turkey um, before this time or you're going to miss out. And what the butchery did in the end was they they ordered everything that people had asked for, um, but we ordered some extra ones as well, just in case. Um, and they were sold either just through walk-ins into the butchery or um, some extra, we put extra ones onto the site as well, just, just so that people could, could, could have a look at them. But again, that trickiness of having stock on Open Food Network and then an actual physical shop being open selling that same stock, you've got to be very careful that somebody doesn't click and say, I want that five kg turkey and then you know somebody walks in the door and buys it so yeah we just had to keep a real like a real eye on that um, and the butchery ended up just um having their 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 all of their shop fronts on open food network whether it was their stock that they had um their own shop front and our shop front it kind of um the stock that they had uh, counted down on both sites of that on both shop fronts if that makes sense so like louise was saying about having everything on there and um, i would definitely recommend and we didn't do the phone um option at all and it's maybe something we should look at doing next year just because we just didn't really have the the staff to um kind of keep that going and have somebody on the phone all the time um, but it's something that we would like to do. Um, I can't remember how we started this conversation. I'm blethering again. Anyway, it worked well. Um, I, I think it was about pre-ordering turkeys and stuff. It was. Um, and, uh, Kate, did you want to say, I think um, the only reason I'm really um, mentioning this is because I was just searching online um, or looking at everyone's shop front and trying to look for like, um, just a silly post to see if I could make a Christmas dinner and I, I found that a lot of people had sold out of turkeys on their hub front quite early in December and um yeah so I just wondered whether that was the experience of the people we had here Kate did you want to I was just going to say obviously we, we didn't get our Christmas cycle on um, separately but we did kind of canvas so we knew we had a rough idea of, of, of how much and our producers were 
were really great they set aside quite a few from us but we when I was kind of like looking I was really really conscious that the um you know like the big supermarkets and were already there you know like buy this our orders are open get ready for Christmas you don't know what's going to happen so I think next year we're going to make sure that we're, we're tied in to advertise at that point um and we're ready to actually to actually say because we did notice that we sold tons of chicken and they did really really well on on the beef and obviously we were we were pork short we, we ended up without turkey as well but the veg sales were through the roof everybody seemed to look to us more for the accompaniments and I did think that maybe quite a lot of people had bought their main somewhere else just to make sure that they had it um there there was I mean that the the beef sales were probably about triple what they normally are triple quadruple they were you know and the, and the kind of meat that was being bought you know there were big big bits and loads and loads of chickens chickens were I think about three times as much as normal as well um but it was it was really on the veg and the things like the um the chutneys the accompaniments and those things that we just went that's where the sales really really were um and I, I when I was looking at it I know we weren't able to have some of it on there but I still think you know a lot of people had bought you know from her and so they knew exactly like you're saying louise like with your mum my mum was the same my mum was like i've booked my dinner from you know mns and that's it and it's done and it was in it was in the freezer and she she you know that that was it because people particularly under the current um you know circumstances people wanted to to make sure that it was that it was um there i mean i think it was a bit different for us because things weren't able to get to us um here but even our, our local butcher in the high street they they sold out quite early of stuff people were just not panic buying but just exactly what you said they just wanted to make sure they they had it but they I do think they knew that they could rely on us for all of the accompaniments but the meat there was a bit of fear attached to it I think you know like must must get in early so we're definitely going to bear that in mind next year um yeah yeah We've got about five more minutes for questions and I'm really aware that I've asked loads of questions. Please, other people jump in, like, yeah. Um, Rachel, I was gonna, oh, sorry, Sally, on you go. No, no, you go. Yeah. Sally, I, I think you're me. muted. Unmuted. Okay, should be better. I haven't done this before, so I don't know how to do it. But um, I, I need some guidance on how to put on the, the website variants, because um, I missed some of the initial talks that Nick did. Um, Nick, uh, probably that's not the content, probably it's not the best to go in that art here, Sally. Um, Nick and actually I will be there tomorrow. We're going to do, we do a drop in every Thursday morning at uh, 10 nice. to 11. And um, certainly I can go through that tomorrow, no problem. Okay. Um, that would be great. It, would that help? Yeah, that would be very good. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'll talk to you tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Um, um, right. Just on the... Um, Christmas meats, I was just wondering, because um, when we took orders for Christmas meats in between mid-November to mid-December, um, we um, had like a pre-order option with a deposit. And I was just wondering if everyone else took deposits for big Christmas meats. I mean, we do it because then people are committed and I think we asked for like a 15 pound deposit um, on, a, on a Christmas meat. Um, and then they get a, adjusted invoice for if there's a bit owing or bit need that needs to be credited to them um and that works really well for us but i was just wondering if anyone did anything different to that really. i i was going to ask about that because maybe we're missing a trick but what i mean are we can only people can only pay in one format when they get to the payment the checkout they have to pay by card um so it's an upfront payment um for whenever they order they, they pay for that order. And then if they go in and adjust that order and say, for example, if, they, if they've if they ordered and it's a delivery, that delivery cost gets added in. But then if they order again, then we say to them, look, put it in as a collection and then we'll know, all right, there's two Sally's here. We'll jump you into the same same group and you everything will get ordered and you only have to pay for one delivery. So 
how does that work for you just out of curiosity how do, do you is it is it an what is it a payment method that you do that's just the deposit or is it a cash thing that you do how does it work for you Rachel uh so it's a very so I think it's a very, I'm not very good at this because my colleague Sarah's department and she's excellent at it but it's as a variant so we've got like Christmas turkeys as a product and then the variant is um pre-order and deposit kind of thing and you pay you add the that item to your basket um and the people of november shop and they get the shop that week and their order is held over to christmas week um and then they generally do another again we, we sent out an email to customers originally, everyone who had pre-ordered, we've got your pre-order, to remind that it's going to be home delivered to you or you're collecting it from, um, and you'll receive a balance invoice in with your shopping, and if you want anything else delivered with your turkey at that time, you can do so, you can order up until Tuesday at 9.30. Um, also we've got a on our delivery options if people order twice in one week um to avoid them paying two lots of delivery we've got a delivery option that says this is my second order this week and it's a free option so they'll pay delivery once for their delivery to plymouth for example and then they go oh i forgot my rice they can add that on and say it's my second order so they don't pay twice that's a really get quite a few people that idea. do that. Okay, that's a good idea because yeah. sometimes people don't and we just have to spot it. And um, I don't know, I've not thought of that. That's a really good idea. Because Yeah, so, so that, that, that'll come up on your delivery list as the prompt to go, oh, they must have another order elsewhere. So yeah, it links them up. Good idea, I like that. That was my question. Um, we've got a couple of minutes left. Do we have any other questions? Um, just a, a quick, we, so we had, it was tricky when everyone went into lockdown, we, so this part of Fife that we are in, well, Fife is kind of out on a limb on its own. It's pretty much three sides surrounded by water. Um, so we, our delivery area is basically just five, but we had some people ordering from Edinburgh and Glasgow. And when they ordered, they were allowed to travel and come and collect it. And then when the new restrictions came into play, um, we then, they really weren't meant to be traveling. But then we, it was, it was a tricky one because they weren't meant to traveling, but we were an essential food hub. So we actually just made the decision. It wasn't many, but we contacted them and said, we have your address as, X, Y, Z in Glasgow, you know, in theory, you're not really meant to be coming from here. And actually many of them were saying, oh, that's just my business address or that's just my, that address. I will actually be, you know, on the outskirts of Fife or in Fife. And um, so I still will be collecting, but we did have to cancel a few orders. Did anyone else, I mean, it's kind of just the time that we're living in, but did anyone else have that issue or say to people please don't we actually had a, our Christmas a physical market um the week before it was meant to take place on the um oh god when was it meant to happen again I should know this off by heart on the 12th or 13th we actually had a our, we had a weekly order cycle that the people then collected at the physical market and we hosted the market and people it went ahead but we did it with only five traders and normally we have about it's normally about 40% of our traders come from Edinburgh and Glasgow. So it was a really pinned back market. And we said, it's an only five market and we only invited five customers. Um, and that was really nice. It kind of rallied the, the five troops the, um, to, come and, to come and support it. Um, but does anyone else struggle with trying to kind of boost people to try and come and support it, um, but really not like don't, traveling, not breaking the rules? Because I know in Scotland, it's county border lines is quite strict right now and um, I don't know if anyone else faces this kind of problems or delivers into other counties. Um, coming from the plague zone here, um, we, um, we don't deliver into other counties um, 
but we are it's really interesting because we do we we've got veganism markets that we hold um and we've actually had several markets cancelled by the local councils who have said that they're, they're not going to go ahead even though they could they just don't feel it it's right and it's a really i mean obviously won't open up now but it's such an interesting or, or uh yeah controversial area to go into because some people really want the markets to be going but there are the people that would potentially travel um to come to us and although they're probably not traveling from out of county um they shouldn't necessarily be you know like like coming to us anyway um we've got a market on the 17th here in Folkestone and a lot of the traders don't want to do it because they don't think we should be having a market and I'm sorry my dog's kicking the iPad again it's every time I talk stop it um it's um it's I've completely lost my thread now oh yes yeah um but some of some of the traders come from further away and and so we're in this really weird um place at the moment where it, we've got it's a vegan essentials market but at the moment i think we've got three stalls selling like household goods and one person selling caribbean food and it's like should we you know um there's just two such distinct ways of thinking here about about what to do so we don't have the the physical boundaries in this issue it's more like a, a boundary in people's opinions about whether or not we should be doing it because we are we don't have like obviously it sounds like you have a um a physical place where you hold it we're, we're a street market so it's it's a little bit different people are they're not just doing their shopping they're coming specifically to do it and it's more like an event um so yeah it's a bit of a divided camp at the moment we're waiting to see whether anybody is, is gonna turn around and, and cancel but we had three this month and two have been cancelled by the people one was by the venue and the other one was by the local council um so folks in council at the moment are still okay about the one on 17th but i don't know i don't know if they're gonna stick with that because they did cancel it quite late before as well um so yeah it's a markets are a very strange thing at the moment aren't they it's people have so many different opinions on them and yeah and, and you, you can't you don't know who's going to come and who's going to travel and um yeah it, it's been really hard actually and what we did we um we cancelled our november market and like, like you said yes we are a physical place and our market is always in this location um, and we are really rural. We're not in a town, we're not in a city, we're not even in a village. We are an old converted farm shed in, in the East Newcombe Fife. It's, it's really rural and people are our main followers. It, we were in 2019, we were known for this big event. We, the market was just one part of it. We had a street food event. We had all under the same roof, live music, bands, workshops, cook schools, and you know, all of that had to stop. Um, but then when we canceled November, I spoke to local council, our EHO officer, and they were like, we really want you to have this. And our, um, lots of the, um, Fife Council um, business gateway so they're kind of always trying to get businesses to to go and function I think there was a real push um, by the Scottish government to keep businesses moving so things like our market they were like you're Covid safe we, we can see you're following the procedures and um, because we were a physical place I think because we were in our location we it wasn't moving around the traders were in one spot it was well ventilated and they really wanted to host us in the end yeah. we pulled the plug on november and um, and when we turned to the traders in december and said it was going to be a fife only market and um, many of our traders were kind of annoyed quite rightly because they come from perth or they come from edinburgh they come from glasgow and um, and that was really tough actually that was really tough and i yeah. the whole day was kind of like this is great because we're open, but um, we're missing some of the key players, which is a real shame. So oh, I can't complain though, because we got to host it and it was, it, yeah. was good and it went well. So hopefully going um, going forward, we can we can have these, but I think we just have to ride it out a bit longer, don't we? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm whinging. <laughs> no, no, you're not. <laughs> what are we gonna do anyway? I think it's it's really interesting to hear like the day to day debates that are going on um, for individuals, and certainly Kay will probably jump in and say similar. But um, this kind of um, your Rosie, it sounds like you really stood behind your values, which were local and protecting people, and um, you have to take a stance, I guess, and in 
that in my point of view, which is only my point of view, you you took a very ethical stance, which I would credit, but someone else might feel differently. But um, it, it it's probably always good from a business to have a stance and to stick by it. And it sounds similar to you, like you, Katie and Kent, you had a, um, a really rough Christmas, but you stood by all your principles and hopefully that will really bring in customers retention in long term. But I'm probably going to have to wrap up now. And I know Kate's probably going to, um, Kate, Kate's going to tell you what we're doing. And I, oh, Rosie, jump in quick. Uh, before one jump. Quick question uh, for Kate, actually. It was on the same what we were just discussing about sticking to your malls and things. I've been kind of playing with this post that I wanted to put out on social media, just saying, like what we just discussed, basically, we, we're still here, we're still wanting to feed our community, we, we want you to shop at Bow House Link, we support these small businesses, um, shop local, shop seasonal, that's kind of our, always our me message. Um, but uh, part of me doesn't, I'm trying to think of the right language or the right kind of post that doesn't seem like we're being rude towards the situation or ignoring the situation or um, saying, please travel to come and collect your produce if we can't deliver. There's kind of a fine line right now because it's so, um, so important that people stay home and that message is stay home and we can't deliver to everyone. Um, what, what we do and how much we ask of our traders as well. So I don't know whether there's like other ideas on right now how we can say also without riding it's kind of like marketing off the back of a disaster do you know what i mean I, there's part of it that doesn't sit yeah I'm not sure what i mean but i can, i don't know if you know what i mean yeah. I, I understand what you mean and i and i i think it's i think it's a really it's a really hard question without a definitive answer and it's really about your customers and your own best guess of yeah. how well you know your customers and how they'll respond to you and also it's about being clear on what your values are as well um, as a business and being free to communicate those. I think it's not kind of, rather than seeing it's like riding on the back of a disaster and using it as like a marketing thing, it's more that communicating what you believe in, what action you're taking, what you stand for, like that, that's a really positive thing for your customers because it's, you know, it's transparency, it's communicating to customers about the things that they care about at the moment as well. So it's not, they won't see it as you riding on the back of a situation that you're meeting them where they are because these are the kind of things that they're worried about and they care about so yeah so but it is challenging and it's hard to get it right and there's no one right answer it's all about who your customers are and what they care about and that's the thing with with marketing messaging is what's really right for one person is is, is a really off-putting thing for another person so for example you know if you've got like a like no, like an anti-mask for example it's just you just just don't know how people are going to respond to the best but it's just being really honest about what you and your team believe is the right thing to do and hope that that kind of resonates with with the right customers who are who who your best customers who yeah who have got the deeper connection with with bohax and what you're doing i don't feel like that was a very definitive answer for you um no no that was useful actually because you're right you've just got to stick true to how you, what language you've used before and your messaging and what's best we're always shout about our traders and what they're doing and um and I suppose you just have to stay true to that, don't you? I think, I don't know, I'm just a little bit of a, a wobble of, oh, is that the right thing to do? But um, yeah, no, that was good advice. Okay. It's just consistency and also just being really confident in what you think is right as a business as well and communicating that. And I think also, like, because we're writing the messages, it's like that, like we probably overestimate the, the negative impact that it might have on some customers. And probably it's more likely that the customers who what you're saying will resonate with will, will have a positive reaction that it probably won't provoke as much of a negative reaction as you think it might do from a small minority of customers so um yeah i think it's it's just really important to speak about what you believe in and what action you're taking there's also i just wrote a blog about um customer relationships and talk a bit about the four c's of, of covid and it's just including your messaging, like people want to hear, um, you know, these four things. So one of them is compassion, community, cleanliness. I've forgotten the fourth one, but I'll share the blog link after we finish talking. 
Um, but yeah, so these are things that customers are actually seeking to hear about in your messaging. So it's just being confident that what, if you're talking about this stuff, customers want to hear it. So. Okay, thank you. Um, so that's a good time to wrap up, guys. I just, yeah, what a, what a lovely chat and just so interesting to hear um, all of your different experiences from Christmas. So thank you so much for coming and sharing. Um, really, yeah, really appreciate this space. So thank you.